on YouTube. And so we have to wait for the live streaming service to pop in. And there we are. That. Okay. And you should be able to see TJ's screen. And let's see. Let's see if we have some familiar, some familiar faces in our room today, TJ. Or we might have some some new folks. Right. Looks like right. Prob probably a combination. Again, welcome yeah. everybody. Yeah, we'll just see. Uh, it looks like we might be leveling off. So everybody that was in our waiting room. Oh, no, never mind. There's a couple more people that have popped in. So, uh, but it is top of the hour. It's one o'clock where you are, TJ. Yeah. Right? So, and it's 10 a.m. for me here on the West Coast. So we will, um, we will get jump right in. So welcome everybody. I am Dr. Deirdre Pickerel. I'm the Dean of Student Success for York University and the Toronto Film School. And I'm very happy to host today um, another really important conversation uh, around diversity, equity, and inclusion office. I'm obviously joined by um, the chat keeps popping up to Mina Jaffari, who is our director of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And uh, we welcome your chat comments today. We welcome your Q comments in the Q&A as uh, you learn more about the DEI office and all of the, the really important work that, that TJ is doing. So with no further ado, TJ, I'm going to turn it right over to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Deirdre. Um, welcome, everybody, to the Introduction to Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Office here at both Yorkville University and Toronto Film School. I'd like to start off with a Indigenous land acknowledgement. Um, so in terms of uh, our Indigenous land acknowledgements for both Toronto Film School and Yorkville University, we do this to reaffirm our responsibility to increase awareness and understanding of First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples and colonial legacy and commit to strengthening our relationship with Indigenous peoples throughout Canada. So this is something that we do uh, as an institution to affirm our commitment as well to Indigenous truth and reconciliation. So at Toronto Film School, we do acknowledge that the land Toronto Film School operates on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In uh, our Toronto Film School online operations. We are in New Brunswick on the traditional territory of the Wabanaki Confederacy, the Mi'kmaq, the Wolostic Malasite First Nation. And we also acknowledge that the applicable treaties for this region are referred to as the Peace and Friendship Treaties. On the Yorkville University side, we acknowledge that Yorkville University operates on land in three provinces. In Ontario, as I mentioned, it's the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. And we acknowledge that the applicable treaty for this region is referred to as the Toronto Purchase. In British Columbia, we're situated on the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples of the Kukite and Kwikwetlam First Nations. And in New Brunswick, we are on the traditional territory of the Wabanaki Confederacy, the Mi'kmaq, the Wolostic, Malasite First Nation. Um, and we acknowledge again that the applicable treaties for this region are referred to as the Peace and Friendship Treaties. So I want to highlight uh, the commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion um, being a critical component at life, of life at both Yorkville University and Toronto Film School. We're committed to making sure that these values are an integral part of our culture um, and that we're committed not only to academic and professional excellence, but also to providing educational services and employment that are focused on promoting the principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Inclusion. And uh, this is obviously very much supported by our senior leadership at the highest levels, Dr. Julia Christensen Hughes, who's the president of Yorkville University, and Andrew Barnsley, who is the president of Toronto Film School. 
I want to introduce myself as well. As Deirdre kindly introduced, my name is Tamina Jaffrey, or also known as TJ. Um, I am the Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion at Yorkville University and Toronto Film School. And I'm really here to help with any type of advice and consultation on diversity, equity and inclusion matters. This also entails implementing our new and emerging uh, proposed diversity and inclusion strategic plan and our commitment to diversity diversity, equity, and inclusion in the classroom. So you can feel free to connect with me at tjaferi at yorkvilleu.ca. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into some definitions around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, we'll also speak about some of the initiatives occurring at Toronto Film School and Yorkville University. And then we will look at some uh, current DEI issues and some tips um, for students related to that. And then we'll certainly open it up at the end uh, for questions as well. So when we're speaking about diversity, we're really looking at the whole wide range of human characteristics, um, which includes human rights code grounds, which are protected in the various pieces of human rights legislation across Canada. So you would be considering grounds like disability, um, marital status, citizenship, uh, creed, religion, sex, which includes both pregnancy and breastfeeding, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression. But when we're looking at diversity, we're also going above and beyond just the human rights code grounds to also consider uh, other aspects of identity like educational background or literacy level and geographical region. So for example, a student that lives in a more rural area um, may experience uh, their experience may experience school at Toronto Film School or Yorkville University in a very different way than, for example, somebody who is attending one of our on campus uh, programs, either in Ontario or BC. Just going to the next definition of equity. Equity is really about acknowledging that we all don't start from a level playing field when it comes to accessing different opportunities and services. Um, so opportunities, whether that is an employment opportunity or educational services, um, and this requires an understanding that there is a need to proactively remove barriers that various marginalized equity seeking communities experience in trying to obtain this type of access. Um, so we're really trying to ensure that there's equal access so that we can um, we can reach a, a point of, of more equal outcomes as well. When we're speaking about inclusion, this is really about making sure that individuals feel welcome in both the academic and workplace environments, and that they're able to bring their authentic selves to the educational and work spheres, and that um, they're able to essentially be themselves as well. One last concept that I wanted to highlight is that of intersectionality. Uh, and this is really getting at the fact that all of our identities have multiple intersecting dimensions. Um, and as a result of that, the way in which a student or an employee um, experiences inequities and barriers to opportunity is really complex. And it's really multi-layered depending on the interplay of these dimensions. Um, so you can see this little diagram here, which is uh, socially locating people's identities and the various aspects that um, compose those identities, whether that's gender, class, race or ethnicity, mental and physical health, ability, age and, and sexuality and so on and so forth. Um, so an example that we could kind of look at to understand what intersectionally intersectionality is all about is for example, um, think about the ways in which the experience of barriers is actually compounded for someone that has a mental health disability such as depression is also black and is also transgender. So this particular individual might face a number of barriers and stigmas. Um, for example, in the classroom, 
someone may make an assumption about their ability to perform in their program because of their mental health disability, because of their depression. Um, in addition to that, because of their racial identity as someone that's black, they may have had a history in their life of having been um, over monitored or over surveillance from um, different institutions, whether that's the police, uh, whether that's at school, um, or in the workplace as well. And in addition to that, because this person is transgender, they might also face a lot of trauma and potential and actual violence uh, because of their gender identity and their gender expression. So these are all the ways in which that one individual uh, might be experiencing various barriers um, on, on multiple levels. And intersectionality, of course, uh, is a term and a concept that was coined by critical race scholar Kimberly Crenshaw in 1989. So it is important for us to uh, take into consideration intersectionality when we're trying to um, fully understand the types of barriers that diverse groups are facing. I also want to talk about how at YU and TFS, we are implementing, as I mentioned, a new proposed diversity and inclusion strategic plan um, and a commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the classroom. And this is really all about ensuring that we are providing a discrimination and harassment free environment as well. Um, some of the strategic focus areas that we've been uh, looking at this past year have been communications. So making sure that diversity is visibly apparent in um, the types of messaging that we're putting out, for example, on social media or uh, through email and other media and, and means of communication. Um, we're also looking at ways that we can collect diversity data um, in a way that, of course, allows students and employees and staff to do that in a self-voluntary uh, way so that we can get a better sense of who the populations are within our community that we are serving and how we can best uh, remove barriers and, and think about um, better diversity and inclusion programming. Uh, this past year, we've also focused very heavily on policy review and looking at all of our policies from a diversity, equity and inclusion lens and also introducing new policies as well um, in order to make sure that we have a uh, comprehensive reach uh, when it comes to DEI. We're also focusing on training and capacity building. So that's really about uh, making sure that we are providing things like webinars and workshops such as this one um, so that we can raise more awareness about DEI uh, within our Yorkville University and Toronto Film School communities. And lastly, a big part of this plan has also been the establishment of diversity advisory councils, which are representative bodies of staff, faculty and students from a cross section of diverse backgrounds who have come together to be able to provide input and feedback on the types of decisions being made at the institution um, and, and programs and projects as well. Um, and we'll be talking about that in a little while in terms of who sits on those councils and how you can get in touch with them in order to uh, provide your feedback on DEI as well. Um, and then lastly, a big part of this plan has been about focusing on the creation of safe spaces for dialogue um, in the classroom and in the workplace as well. So as I mentioned, I wanted to get into the actual diversity advisory councils. So these are a great venue where you can bring up DEI issues that matter to you, um, either through your peers or through myself as well. Um, you may have recalled early, if you were here last year, earlier um, in 2021, we had put out a call for expressions of interest in uh, being on these various diversity advisory councils. We have um, two for staff and faculty of both YU and TFS, and we have similarly two respective student diversity advisory councils for each institution as well. Um, and as you can see, we have a wonderful array of people who have joined these diversity advisory councils um, from all kinds of backgrounds and diversity dimensions, and they bring uh, a lot of rich experience and knowledge to helping us identify 
different barriers and how we can remove them within the system. Um, the websites uh, for both TFS and YU have more information on the members. If you go to the diversity, equity and inclusion webpage and they have their bios as well and their names. Um, and we're definitely all working collectively to promote DEI and ensure that student voices such as yours are heard when it comes to decision making. I wanna actually get into who exactly sits on the council so that if you wanted to uh, get in touch um, with any of the members, you are more than welcome to do so. So we have um, first our first student on the YU Student Diversity Advisory Council is Sura Al Mansour, who I believe is here. So hi Sura, she is a BBA student. Uh, Devani Savalia is a BID student. Uh, Demi Babatunde and Clay Roth are both MACP students that sit on our council. Of course, our wonderful Dean of Student Success, Deirdre Pickerel, uh, and the co-host of this session is also on this particular council. Um, and Ali Noor and Pauline Tiongson, who many of you might know as both the Student Life Coordinator and Student Activities Coordinator, respectively in Ontario and BC, um, are also on this council. And both of them do a lot of uh, uh, amazing events and programming for students um, on campus and online and so I would highly recommend um, getting in touch with them if you would like to be involved in various activities throughout the year um, and you're able to contact any of these members through the University Outlook directory if you just uh, type their name uh, in the directory. On the Toronto Film School side uh, we have um, a number of students who are part of this Diversity Advisory Council. We have Hussam al Agbari, who's a film production student, Linka Nitarika, who's in the Acting for Film, TV and Theatre program, Balahan Gurel, who's in the Toronto Film School Online Writing for Film and TV program, and then of course, um, Deirdre Pickerel, Dean of Student Success. Um, and as I mentioned, please feel free to uh, look them up on the Outlook directory if you would like to get in touch uh, in order to talk about a DEI issue or bring it to the council's attention. I also want to take a moment to highlight uh, some of the initiatives that we're doing around Indigenous student inclusion and feedback as well. Um, as I mentioned before in the Indigenous Land Acknowledgement, Yorkville University and Toronto Film School's commitment to Indigenous truth and reconciliation um, is very much about forming meaningful relationships of mutual understanding and dialogue. Currently, um, the DEI office and the manager of Indigenous and partnership engagement, um, we're both looking at ways to engage in Indigenous students so that they also have a similar mechanism for providing specific feedback on their experiences. Um, so it, it will be something that we are right now looking to gather more um, feedback from, from various Indigenous students. So if you do identify as Indigenous, please feel free to reach out to me, um, or if you have any classmates or friends uh, that also identify, you know, please feel free to let them know. Right now, we're looking at uh, getting more of an understanding of Indigenous student needs. Um, and then obviously, in the near future, the idea is to have a similar uh, diversity advisory council, but which is specifically focused on Indigenous student issues. Um, so just stay tuned for more details on that. I also wanted to highlight our fabulous diversity calendar, which comes out every year in January. This is a great tool um, primarily because it's really about respecting cultural faith and diversity days of significance. So as you can see, we have um, both months highlighted for October and November. Um, there's always various uh, faith-based days that are highlighted on here, cultural days, and also heritage months as well um, that are celebrated across Canada. And um, so I would definitely highly recommend referring to this tool when you're planning for any absences that you might have from assignments um, or exams. It's really helpful to uh, look at this in advance and then to get in touch with the Academic Accommodations and Accessibility Office um, in order for them to help you be able to arrange those types of accommodations um, with the faculty. So they would be the ones dealing directly with the faculty on that. 
I see, uh, thank you so much, Sura, for the wonderful comment on the calendars. Yeah, our marketing um, team did an amazing and wonderful job on making sure that it's very uh, representative of the beautiful diversity in our communities at Yorkville University and Toronto Film School. I also want to highlight the LGBTQI2SA plus safe spaces initiative. Um, so this is for any students who identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, questioning, intersex, two-spirited, um, asexual plus. So we do have regular Zoom drop-in sessions for students that identify um, who want support and who really just want to create a sense of community um, with others. So if you do go to MyYU and MyTFS, if you see these icons here at the bottom of the screen, they will direct you to the LGBTQ I2SA plus safe space. And earlier in the year, um, during Pride Month, we also launched the Safe Spaces Toolkit, um, which really helps people to create these types of um, spaces for more uh, open discussion and more conversations around um, LGBTQ plus inclusion. And it also provides referrals to relevant community supports um, that our students might need or, or our faculty and staff as well. So I would highly uh, recommend checking out the, the toolkit as well. Um, lastly, I wanted to highlight the mental health and wellness supports that students have. Um, we have available for students free confidential mental health counseling. Um, as you can see, you can access this at uh, the Jane app um, link. So for Yorkville University students, we have uh, the link at https colon slash slash yorkville u um, dash bc dot jane app dot com. And for Toronto Film School students, it's at https colon slash slash tfs dot jane app dot com. And um, as you can see, we have a number of uh, amazing counselors um, at both YU and TFS that are able to help you with a variety of, of complex mental health needs. Uh, we have Goli Shamlu, Friha Mian, Bertina Tan, uh, Vipjeet Sidhu, and Tiara Ibrahim. So I would highly, highly recommend please taking advantage um, of this service, especially during the times that we're in right now. Um, it's very understandable for students to be going through a lot of stress and um, we want to make sure that you're aware of the services that the university and the school offer to help you navigate those issues. So now I want to get into um, some of the common student uh, issues or um, you know scenarios that we come across when it when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and also just providing some tips to students as well in terms of how to navigate some of these uh, particular issues. Um, so obviously at the school, at Toronto Film School, at Yorkville University, um, there's very much the explicit uh, expectation um, that all of our in-person and virtual interactions with our classmates, with um, instructors, with staff um, are done in a respectful manner. And this can also include um, various means of communication on social media as well. So you might have WhatsApp chats, for example, for your group projects. You might be interacting with our communications team or with other people on our social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, in addition to that, we also want to make sure that we are respectful of um, gender identity and gender expression and making sure that um, when someone has identified what their chosen gender pronouns are, uh, that we're respecting that and that we are um, using exactly those pronouns and not misgendering someone, um, which really can be uh, a slight and an affront to their dignity. Um, in addition to that, we want to just be avoiding disrespectful, abusive behaviors, um, violating any kind of boundaries or consent, um, you know, uh, staying away from behavior that could be characterized as harassment as well. And I just want to focus a little bit on the violating boundaries and consent aspect. I think that's a really important one, um, especially in the post-secondary context. Uh, so for example, I mean, the short of it is that when someone says, no, we really 
have to uh, abide by that and respect that. So for example, if you um, have a classmate or a friend um, who's in one of your courses and you know you happen to get into uh, an intimate interpersonal relationship with them you want to be making sure that every step of the way you're asking them for their consent um, you know whether that's to to touch them or to hug them or any um, kind of further action beyond that um, it's extremely important that we're respecting uh, people's boundaries and consent and that um, silence is not does not mean the absence of consent um, so it's extremely important for us to be critical, uh, critically aware of that as well. Um, in addition to that, uh, our policies, uh, our student conduct policies at uh, Yorkville University and Toronto Film School are very clear as well that there are a number of unacceptable behaviors that have consequences, whether that's threats, intimidation, displays of racism, sexism, sexual harassment, sexual assault, um, ableism, anti-Black racism, anti-Indigenous sentiment, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, anti-immigrant sentiment, uh, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, and any other type of prejudice or hatred towards an identifiable group, um, which includes unnecessarily unnecessary physical contact and also suggestive remarks or gestures, um, or even sharing offensive um, pictures or jokes as well. I'm just sorry, I'm just looking at the chat. So I know that um, Sura had mentioned uh, a really great uh, tip. So she mentioned that um, students use uh, MS Teams as well, which is offered for free through YU and TFS um, instead of a more personal platform like WhatsApp or Facebook in order to communicate as this allows for a silent boundary to be in place about this being an educational platform for collaboration and working together. Um, and she also mentions that if any issues arise, you can add the professor to the group to mediate any issues. That's a fantastic um, suggestion. Thank you so much, Sura. Uh, I think that's that's spot on and, and that's the best way um, in which you can navigate a lot of your classroom interactions with um, your classmates and groups and, and also be able to invite, as you say, the professor to uh, that conversation. Um, so just moving on to some of the other scenarios that come across or, or just tips about, um, you know, common student experiences uh, is that obviously when we are at um, Yorkville University and Toronto Film School, the best thing is really for us to be trying to get out of our comfort zone when we're in group assignments. Um, you know, that's where a lot of the growth occurs um, and you're able to interact with people from diverse backgrounds, perspectives, working styles, learning styles, um, and taking advantage of these opportunities uh, in university and at the film school to work with different people really prepares you for the working world and life. Um, it's just inevitable that you will not always be working with people who have the exact same approach as you. And um, where else, what, be what better place to learn and to also make mistakes as well and to learn from those mistakes um, than here in the post-secondary context. Um, I also wanted to mention that whether you're new to Canada or you're not, um, please do take advantage of the experience of being surrounded by so many um, friends and colleagues and co-workers from diverse cultures and experiences. Um, I also wanted to just uh, briefly address inclusion issues in groups and group work as well. Um, we would just encourage you to speak in English when you are uh, doing a group assignment or you're in class and um, you know engaged in class related activities that really helps everyone feel included and respected. Um, it also helps them to understand what's actually going on and, and the important information that they need in order to succeed in an assignment. Uh, and this also would relate to student social activities as well. But I do want to highlight that this does not prevent anyone from speaking um, in their own language or a different language on their own time. Um, we just want to make sure that we're being respectful and inclusive of everyone um, when we're in the classroom and, and engaged in, in student social activities. Some other uh, common student uh, comments and scenarios that we heard from when we were uh, 
putting out the call for the diversity advisory councils um, was that some students such as international students were mentioning that they felt shy to open up in the classroom um, because of their level of fluency in English, or perhaps um, there's a negative portrayal of or image of their country of origin. And they felt like they had to be really hyper vigilant about that. Um, and as you can imagine, that has a huge impact on them and their inclusion within the classroom. It does stop them from making friends, from interacting with colleagues. Um, so we just wanna be mindful of that as well, that everyone's um, coming from a, a different experience and um, you know, we want to just, to the best of our ability, uh, be able to make them feel comfortable about that and that they are um, a valued member of our YU and TFS community. Um, lastly, it's, it's really important for all of us to do this. We all have unconscious and conscious biases. Um, for example, we might have some of those biases about someone's abilities based on how well we think they speak English. Um, and again, that's another area where it really can impact um, that student's access to a more fulsome university and school experience um, and whether they actually engage, for example, in social activities or in other groups um, with students in order to build a sense of community. I think uh, I'm just looking at another comment here from Giovanna Barreto. Uh, she, sorry, I just I want to make sure I, I hope I pronounced that correctly, but Giovanna is saying that it is absolutely true. I have had the opportunity to study and meet students in my cohort group, and we have worked in assignments, which has greatly enriched my perspective. Um, that has been a fantastic experience in Yorkville. And I'm so pleased, uh, Giovanna, that you've had uh, this experience. Um, that's that's really wonderful to hear, and, and I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Um, and hope you continue to have that uh, experience as well. Um, and so Sophia Georgiadu, who's actually one of our MACP uh, instructors, has said, yes, I have also, um, sorry, just gonna, yes, I've also heard students say that they do not upload a picture in their student profile or Moodle due to being, due to fear of being othered or discriminated. Um, yeah, so I can imagine that's a very real, a very real fear that someone could have, you know, whether it's on the basis of um, a visible disability or their race, um, perhaps they wear uh, visible symbols of faith as well. Um, so that's something I think Sophia has pointed out an extremely important aspect uh, of, you know, whether someone chooses to appear on camera or put their picture up um, can have a real, uh, there can be a deeper meaning behind that from a DEI perspective. Um, and lastly, something else that I just wanted to bring um, to our attention is that the classroom really is a place for debate and exchange of thoughts. Um, sometimes this means that we're going to have uncomfortable conversations where people disagree with each other. Uh, but at the end of the day, it, it really is possible to do this and have um, and remain respectful of differences at the same time. Um, I realize that sometimes, depending on the topic, it can get quite emotionally charged. Um, and in those circumstances, I would definitely recommend that you please take care of yourself. Please avail yourself um, of the mental health supports that the that York, Yorkville and Toronto Film School provide. Um, and also uh, lean on um, your instructors as well and, and staff and support services, student services, the DEI office, if you feel like you need further support in engaging in some of these difficult types of conversations. But I would like to very clearly highlight that academic freedom of expression in the post-secondary context is balanced with the respect for the dignity of all people. Um, and that at YU and TFS, there is no tolerance for expressions of hate towards any person or group. Um, so it is important to realize that any right uh, under the charter, under various human rights legislation is not absolute. There is always this balancing act between um, freedom of expression and making sure that groups um, that have historically experienced this type of hate or discrimination are also protected and that their rights are also protected uh, in our society. 
So I, I want to mention that obviously the classroom is the best place for discussions on diversity and inclusion and examining class material through different lenses and the perspectives of different groups. Um, and we certainly welcome that at Yorkville University and Toronto Film School. And the DEI office is very much committed to supporting those conversations and supporting you in them as well. So I wanna thank you all so much um, for listening uh, uh, attentively to the webinar. I'm gonna open it up now to DEI questions and answers. Again, as I mentioned, please feel free to connect with me at tjaferi at yorkvilleu.ca um, if you would like to discuss anything DEI related. And I will now stop sharing my screen and I'll pass it over to uh, Deirdre to help us out with the Q and A. Well, TJ, thanks so much for that really informative session, and I always admire how you you um, you manage to do all your presentations so beautifully and monitor the chat at the same time. <laughs> so, oh no, um, thank you so much. Everybody, feel if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to pop them in the chat or use the Q and A. But there are two questions that have come through, and in hindsight, I think I probably could have asked this around the DA, um, the Diversity Advisory Council, but I didn't really want to interrupt, but. We have a question, what kind of activities do you participate in as a DAC faculty member? Sure. Um, so in terms of the DAC faculty members that we have, a lot of the time they are providing advice on some of the new policies and procedures that we were uh, developing this year around diversity, equity and inclusion. Um, so they were able to provide input on new policies like the diversity, equity, and inclusion policy, a policy related to gender inclusion, um, some of our revisions to the prevention of sexual violence policy as well. So they've been able to um, provide that, but they, they're they often um, participating in events as well or, or coming up with ideas about Heritage Month events um, that they want to be uh, a part of. Um, so for example, actually, I, I just want to make a plug for next week's um, why you uh, uh, special uh, webinar, which is in uh, commemoration of Islamic History Month, we're actually going to be having a number of um, various faculty uh, and, and scholars at YU participating in an event on October 26th at uh, 1 p.m. So I would highly recommend, um, you know, coming out to that. We're going to have Dr. Maha Salman, Dr. Iman Nasser, um, other professors such as Chadash Diadoglu and uh, Jalal Deed on, um, who are from the general uh, studies program. Um, so those are some of the types of events that we typically will have faculty, whether they're on the diversity advisory council or not. Sometimes it's the members that are on those councils that are spearheading it, but others are actually um, the panel members. Um, so yeah, anything that relates to DE&I that I also need to go and seek advice on from the perspective of faculty, I'm continuously going there and going to them to get their views on that. Um, so, in keeping with the discussion on the Diversity Advisory Council, somebody has asked, when can, can someone apply to be part of the DAC? Will you be accepting more students or does it change each year? How, does, how are the councils, councils formed and, and reformed, I guess? Right. So typically what happens is that students that are um, sitting on these councils, they will uh, complete their term at the end of their graduation date. So that's typically when um, they would be moving on. Uh, but what we do is we do monitor it to see, you know, when is the next time that we need to do a recruitment cycle. Um, so for students, it's a little bit different because it's based on their graduation date. But I would anticipate in the near um, upcoming future that we would want to be putting out another call again as students are uh, graduating. For faculty and staff, it's a little bit um, different. They do have a two-year term. So once that's up, um, we would have another recruitment cycle. Um, but again, it's it's very flexible and it's, it's really about just monitoring to make sure that we have representation um, on the councils. And so there's not necessarily a fixed date by which we would be um, relaunching the recruitment, but certainly stay tuned uh, for that uh, if you are interested in participating. And I would even say, you know, even if you don't end up being on the council, please feel free um, to, to join us in planning events, in, you know, giving your views. There's no uh, barrier to that at any time if you want to participate. 
Can alumni be part of the DAC, TJ? So as far as we know right now, uh, no, that there, there isn't really that representation from alumni. But again, as I mentioned, that doesn't stop any alumni from um, staying connected with us and, and making sure that, uh, you know, any views that they have, any experiences that they think it's really important for us to know about, I would certainly um, welcome that uh, as well. Right. Okay, so questions are coming in fast and furious. Uh, what would you suggest we do as instructors in online courses to respect our, our students' gender expression? More often than not, students don't disclose their chosen pronouns. Could we encourage them as instructors to message us privately if they want us to know more about their gender identity? Sure. Um, so I think that's a really good question. Obviously, this is a really sensitive uh, topic. It's, it's not something where we are trying to in any way for someone to disclose their gender identity or gender expression. Um, so for example, at YU and TFS, it's actually part of our institutional corporate signature now to include our gender pronouns. So for example, I, um, you know, I have included mine and various other people have included theirs. And those are just some of the smaller steps that you can kind of take um, you know, as an ally to say, these are my pronouns. If anyone's, uh, you know, comfortable sharing, you know, please share your pronouns as well. I know that there are some professors who do um, like a, a little bit of an intro, you know, for the students to say where they're from, their name, um, and if they want, they can say their gender pronouns as well. So I would really leave it as an option for them, um, obviously articulating it uh, explicitly that, you know, my name's Tamina, I, I'm your instructor, and my pronouns are she and her. And then, um, and that kind of sets the tone and allows students to feel like, okay, this is um, a place where I can really, if I choose to, reveal my pronouns as well. Right. And Sura in the chat has, has uh, let us know that you can also add your pronouns into your profile on your YU dashboard if you're comfortable with that. And so that's Absolutely. a way for students to, to, to do that. Great, thanks so much, um, Sarah. I didn't know that, <laughs> so that's good to know. Um, so we have a, an MACP student um, wondering if you have any guidance on how to apply this information in the counseling context. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, that's definitely an area that I'm working very closely with uh, the MACP faculty on as well. And I've had a lot of amazing conversations with um, diverse MACP students as well. Um, you know, we're very aware of the fact that in the counseling field, um, it's important to, to gain those experiences and those skills of being able to service uh, diverse populations who are coming um, with all sorts of you know, very complex issues, depending on, for example, their country of origin, there might be, you know, complex trauma that they faced, or, um, you know, maybe as a racialized person, uh, they experience certain things within society, which further compound their experience of feeling um, marginalized or, or experiencing barriers. So um, I definitely think there's always that constant dialogue that we're having uh, with each of the programs in, between myself and the various programs, including MACP, to look at um, how we can uh, further embed diversity, equity, and inclusion um, within our counseling practices as well. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, we have some extreme Extremely fabulous counselors at TFS and YU who are very well versed um, in diversity, equity, and inclusion are, and are able to help students process and navigate um, complex trauma, which can often be the result of, of various barriers that they faced uh, because of their identity. Yeah, great. Okay, another question. Um, just so somebody's asked, I wanted to verify whether there is an existing gender inclusion policy or whether this is something that's in development. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Caitlin, for that. So that is one of the policies that we were working on um, is a gender inclusion policy and procedures. Um, so that's just currently going through our, our academic governance and um, you know regulatory processes that we go through in order to approve, uh, but definitely stay tuned for that. And I'm more than happy um, to continue to connect with you if you have further questions on that, but that's all, that's all part of our slate of new um, mm -hmm. DEI and human rights related policies that will be um, launched in the near future. Right. Um, 
so I think this goes back to the other um, safe space um, initiatives that we've done. Is there any plans to implement safe talk and listening sessions for various equity seeking groups? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, we, we've definitely started uh, providing those types of spaces for the LGBTQ plus community. And obviously we wanna continue looking at um, various equity seeking groups. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to also have feedback to look at where there might be a need to provide uh, further spaces. As I mentioned, also we're looking at doing um, that for indigenous students too. And that doesn't exclude us or bar us from continuing to um, focus on specific groups, but it's more, we, we look at it more from a needs-based perspective. Um, so please do feel free if there is a specific type of space um, that you're looking for, I'm more than happy to hear that feedback and for us to put that into uh, action. That's great. Okay, we've got one last question, um, unless more surface. I appreciate the, the clear policies around overt hate, have issues around microaggressions and other subtle seeming or passive harms been considered as well? Right, that's a really great um, question. Great. Yeah, and so that is another aspect that is very much explicit and clarified in our new and upcoming diversity, equity and inclusion policy. Um, it's very clear in terms of what microaggressions are and what kind of impacts um, they might have on people as well. And I think that that's definitely an area that we can do further um, education on and, and workshops and uh, webinars on as well. So I definitely want to assure you that um, both subtle uh, and overt forms of these types of uh, exclusionary behaviors and um, attitudes are, are absolutely a part of uh, the DEI office's mandate and focus. Thank you so much, uh, Deirdre, for putting our emails in there. Yeah, I, just, I thought that'd be helpful. So I put our emails in the chat, obviously, Tamina with her really critically important role uh, across York University and Toronto Film School. I sit on both um, diversity advisory councils for students on the TFS and on the YU side. So my email's in the chat. If anybody has any questions or has some recommendations or suggestions, we have another, we have another question that's come in. <laughs> um, so many students face uh, micro and macro aggressions from their professors. Are there any mechanisms to avoid negative academic outcomes if we address these experiences? Yeah, absolutely. So I've definitely had students reach out to me, um, you know, to talk about certain issues and we're very sensitive to the fact that some of them, you know, because of the various dimensions of their um, identity as well, don't actually want to take this forward as um you know, something that will identify them. So in those cases, there's still a way for us to address the issue. So you can, for example, come and speak to me um, and talk to me about the issue and what, uh, what the problem is. And what I can do is really, we can kind of work together to make sure um, that going forward, when I'm looking to address this with um, leadership and, and faculty, that I'm able to do so then in a way that's tailored to um, really respecting and protecting the confidentiality of that person. Again, I do want to just, you know, put a little caveat in there that it also depends too on the circumstances. If it is something, um, you know, that is, is quite serious or is a health and safety issue um, for someone or for others in our community, you know, those types of issues may need to be um, navigated in a, in a really um, sensitive way, but in a way that we're actually taking action as well. So I would just invite any students who do have that concern, um, you know, to please reach out and I'm more than happy to have a conversation and to work with you in a way that we can still address the issue. And, you know, if you do have some concerns about, um, you know, your identity and not wanting that to be revealed, um, we can certainly respect that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, uh, doesn't look like there's any more questions at 10 to the hour. There's no more messages in the chat. So I think we might have had yet another um, very successful introduction to the DEI office. And as always, some really important questions came forward. And you know, this, is, this is part of ongoing dialogue, right? Language and our understanding Absolutely. of these things continues to evolve. So 
TJ and I do this every quarter, and um, obviously the DACs exist every day. And so please, if there's anything that any of us can do for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. We have live stream to YouTube. And so I, it takes about 24 hours or so, but if you happen to want to watch us again, uh, you certainly could, uh, could do that. But then we, I don't know, do we have a date for 2022? I think we're probably January, I, I February or something like that. We do, yeah. It's going to be in January, I believe in the third yeah. week of January. Yeah. So you could, you know, and, and even though um, the presentation is often fairly similar, I always find that the conversation that we have is distinctly different because we have a different cohort of students attending and so we get different questions so exactly. even though it might seem like the same session if you found this interesting and helpful i really would encourage you to attend again and um you know uh, and then continue to participate in these ongoing and really important conversations absolutely thank you so much deirdre i really appreciate it um deirdre is a huge uh, ally advocate and supporter of dei um, and the dei office and uh, student success and the academic accommodations and accessibility office work very closely together yeah, yeah. um so we we definitely all have um access accessibility diversity equity and inclusion top of mind yeah perfect Enjoy uh, the rest of your Tuesday, everybody. It was lovely uh, to sort of see you. <laughs> we really appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy days to come and talk to us about such an important conversation. And again, if there's anything that we can do for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. We are here to help you as students have an exceptional experience while you're with us. Take care.